guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I am so excited to film this for you today. I am here, I am back in my office. <laughs> I really love my uh, setup, you guys. It makes me really happy. I really don't ever film here, so it's really fun too. Before I jump into the video, I want to apologize because as you may or may not know, I had my laptop stolen um, earlier in the year, a couple months ago, whatever, like last month. I don't know, time is weird. It really devastated my YouTube career because I had so many videos on there either ready to post or ready to edit. And um, it taught me a really big lesson. Like I used to film a video and then immediately edit it and upload it. And if I had done that to all of these videos I had, then they would be up. Um, I've been really lazy in 2021. I haven't loved that. So I am trying to get back into things. I'm trying to get over the depression of losing everything. And I'm just gonna be refilming some stuff. So this video I actually had filmed before. So thank you if you have stuck through with me. I promise you guys. I am going to try to get back on a more consistent schedule. I can't promise you once a week yet, but I can promise you that you'll see me more, I promise. We're gonna be talking about modern Iran facts. I think there's a lot of things about modern Iran that would surprise a lot of people, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. So my first fact is men and women that don't ma get married in Iran stay at home with their parents. Forever. I guess this is a normal thing in the East and in Asia in general, but definitely here in the West and in, I know in Europe and stuff, that is not really normal. People usually move out of their house regardless of their marital status in the United States or in the West in general, but in Iran, if you don't get married, you stay home. I have like 40 year old, 50 year old cousins that still live with their parents and nothing to frown upon. That is just normal, but it's odd to me. And that sounds horrible for both you and the parent, but whatever, I digress. My next fact is that there are nearly 12 million people in Tehran. That's a lot of people for one city. That's a really, really, really big crowded city. And there's nearly 84 million people in all of Iran. So a really good like chunk of them reside in Tehran alone. Or if you've ever been to Tehran, you know it's like um it's like a London. Like it's like so big and metropolitan and um I love Tehran so much. My next fact is that starting at nine years old, women are expected to wear a hijab. Now if you turn nine and you don't look nine, <laughs> I don't even know what a nine-year-old would look like. But if you if you feel like you still look like a child and can get away with it. A lot of girls don't start wearing a hijab at night. They will wait until they're like developing and then like start wearing one. But I know personally, and I know from my cousins and stuff, we didn't really start wearing one until we were like 11 or 12, but you're expected to start wearing one at nine, which is weird because nine-year-olds look like five-year-olds in my opinion, but whatever. My next fact is pretty interesting to me. It's that gay, being gay is banned in Iran. You're not allowed to be gay, which I don't know how you can ban that, man. If you wanna be gay, go home and be gay. Being gay is banned, but being trans is not only okay, but it's a very, it's a very common surgery in Iran. Iran is actually the number one country, I don't know, in the Middle East or the world, but the number one country for transsexual um, gender changing surgery. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know the proper word. Basically, if you're a trans person, you can get um, a gender change surgery in Iran, and not only can you get it there, but it's very popular to go there and get. Also paid for by the government. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Iran has created the largest rug in the world. It is the size of a soccer field and it's handmade. That seems like it took a lot of dedication. They also have created the largest sandwich in the world, question mark. It was 5,000 feet long, so 
we hold that record. Iran is also the largest producer of caviar, saffron, and pistachios in the world. All three of those things are very luxurious and bougie. <laughs> this one makes me really happy. Iran has over 1 million foreign refugees. So something that makes me really proud to be an Iranian is that if you if you travel to Iran and you know anything about it, Iran's a really helpful country when it comes to the countries surrounding it in the Middle East. I may be talking really uneducated right now, and if I am, I'm so sorry. But from what I know and from what I've seen with talking with other people and talking to people in Iran, you know, there's lots of Afghani refugees there. There's lots of fighting of like terrorism and I don't know, it's just a woke country in, it, in and of its own. It's, um, Iran is always helping countries around it that are in need of help, which there are a lot of because there's a lot happening in the Middle East at all times. Iran also has one of the only condom factories in all of the Middle East. <laughs> so if you are in the Middle East and you purchase a condom, it probably came from Iran. It's funny because this company actually has um, advertisements like all over Iran as well so Iran has the highest rates of nose jobs per capita and let me tell you guys I know people who have gotten nose jobs in Iran and then gotten nose jobs here in the United States and a lot of people regret doing it in the United States Iran not only do they do a lot of nose jobs but they do a really good job especially these days like not all the noses look the same, you know? Everybody's is different. Mine is not a nose job. Let me make that clear to you all. <laughs> this nose is mine. <laughs> it's a God-given gift. I just, I don't get the nose job thing, by the way. Like, I don't know why so many Iranian girls get nose jobs. A lot of them, their noses are fine. And even like, even if you have like a larger nose, like, who cares? Like, it's beautiful. It is your representation of your culture. Love your nose. <laughs> Public service announcement, love yourself, love your nose, you're fine. You don't need a nose shop. But if you're gonna get one, if you really hate your nose and you're gonna get one, go to Iran. <laughs> and be really picky and really specific about what you want for any surgery ever of your body. Anyway, I mean, we, we can talk about this another time. Next fact and another thing I freaking love about Iran is that Iran has all climates. There's desert, there's rainforest, there's beaches, there's mountains, there's literally all, every climate, every environment, there's snow. And I just love that about Iran. Like you can go from the south to the north and literally hit every single climate from everything I just said, starting at like hot desert beaches and then going up and going through the desert and then hitting the mountains and then finally hitting the lush rainforest north of Iran, which I love so much, by the way, I have a lot of videos on it. Please go watch them. I love the north of Iran so much. Shomal is beautiful. A sad fact about Iran is that there's about $50 billion lost in Iran every year from what's called brain drain. Basically, brain drain is when smart people leave the country for better opportunities. So obviously right now with the economy and a lot of different things with the government, it's not easy to progress in Iran and to do well in Iran. Um, also, the education system is different there. It's harder to do what you want, pretty much. It's harder to pass the tests and do what you want. Like for example, my cousin, she um, couldn't do what she wanted to do in Iran, which is become a dentist. So she came here and now she's on the path to doing it. So Iran loses a lot of smart people, mainly students or um, people with money. You know, they'll really try to get out of there to make a better life for themselves. And it's sad, again, because these people could be helping Iran and helping the economy there, but the government's not helping them. So they're like, bye. Another thing I love about Iran is that 70% of the people that graduate are women. 
Iran actually has a higher grad rate of women to men and that might just be because of how the workforce is like a lot of men have to start working after high school or they have a connection to a job or a factory or something so instead of going to school they'll start working um, so a lot of women are the educated ones and the ones that do finish school and I love that I love that women education is not only celebrated and um, encouraged in Iran, but that women love to get educated there. <laughs> My next fact about Iran is when a couple is getting married, they have to take like a sex class. <laughs> Basically, just like everywhere else in the world, sex is very taboo and like your parents are not going to tell you about sex. Like that is something you are going to go find out for yourself. Um, so in Iran, basically, whenever a couple is getting married, and I do think they actually have a little bit of sex education in school now because I remember my cousin telling me about that, but when you're getting married, you have to take this class <laughs> that, that basically explains contraceptives and um, sex. I don't think it talks about like how to do it or anything, but just like all the medical biology biological things um, they talk about that and they do a full blood test to make sure like you're good and that your man's is good and you can do it <laughs> the next fact about Iran is that no ruse which is the new year in Iran which is on the first day of spring every year that is pretty much the only break that um, Iranians have there is a summer break too, for students. Growing up in the United States, you know, we have so many random holidays. We have like 4th of July, we have Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, we have Valentine's Day, and all of these days, even if we have to work or go to school on those days, like it's like a break pretty much. And we have a lot more little breaks throughout like the school year and stuff. Not for workers, by the way. Let me tell you, I work every single stupid day of my life but I'm talking for students. But in Iran, um, they really only have the time of New Year. So when it's New Year, the kids get out of school for I think 10 days or something. Um, the parents are out of work and that's a time when Iranians will travel to see family or you just travel to enjoy the beginning of spring. I've never been to Iran in spring, but like I want to so bad because everything's blooming and everything's so beautiful. But even though they have less like holiday breaks, I will say that the day-to-day -day life in Iran and just in the East in general is much more relaxing. Um, like for example, for me, I work straight from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every weekday. And then I have two days for the weekend off. But in Iran, they'll wake up, go to work, and then come back for lunch. They'll have lunch with their family, and then they take a little nap, and then they go back to work, and they work for a few more hours in the evening and then they come back at a decent time in, a, in order to like have dinner with their family and again, relax. So the daily life is much more relaxing. Also shopping in Iran is usually really fun. They have really big um, grocery stores now that have like everything in them, like a Walmart type situation. But for the most part, how you shop in Iran is you have to go to a different store for everything. So if, for example, you're having a dinner party, you would have to go to the fruit store, and then the vegetable store, and then the meat store, and then the bread store, and then the dessert store, and all of that. <laughs> and that sounds like exhausting and a lot, but it's actually really fun to just walk down the street and go to all the different stores and get your things. But I guess that would be annoying after a certain amount of time. I guess some things that might surprise people is just the hospitality and the people there like are so nice and are so dressed up all the time. I wear less makeup here for sure than in Iran. In Iran, yes, I wear like the hijab and the manto and everything. So obviously that covers up my clothes and I'm not really able to express myself in that way. But that's a lie because <laughs> that's actually a lie because you can't express yourself with the hijab and the manto and by choosing patterns and colors or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is that 
women, people in general, but women love makeup there. So it doesn't matter if you're doing a quick run to the store or what, like it is expected to be full, full beat eyeliner, just the whole thing everywhere you go because that's their main source of expression, I guess, is makeup. But again, going back to the hijab thing, it's not that bad. It's not like horrible. And obviously if I lived in Iran, I would feel differently about this. I know somebody's watching this from Iran and is like, I hate you. Yes, it's horrible. It's not as bad as I think people in the West think it is because again, you are able to customize your outfit and the hijab you're wearing and the manto you're wearing and your pants are obviously showing. So it's not like you can't be cute. It's just different. You can't like show your body and be cute. <laughs> I'm trying to think from my own experience what I can talk about from, about modern Iran, but I just think it's a lot more modern than you guys would expect. Like when I go to Iran, my favorite things to do are go to restaurants and there are such nice restaurants in Iran. You guys can go back and watch my videos. I have tons of them where I go to really nice restaurants um, over there and I lo we love to go out and like there are escape rooms and there are a lot of like little play places <laughs> not play places but like you know what I mean little uh, arcades and things like that there's a ton of stuff to do in Iran um, obviously shopping going to the bazaars just being in nature um, going on a picnic and obviously um, there are separate like beauty salons in Iran for men and women and there are a lot of separate things like that. Another fact that I have for you guys is that since in public everything is so separated and you can't, you have to wear a job and everything, in private Iranians have a lot of fun. So a lot of Iranians either own or know somebody that owns like a big garden area that has usually like a pool and like a house. And then once a week, your whole family, all your friends, whatever, will gather in this area, in this garden, which is called a bar. And usually the garden has like different sections. Like I know in ours, again, there's a video of it. You can go, I'll, I'll link all these videos so it make it easier. But in ours, there's like different sections. There's like a little section for the kids to go play and then there's a little section to just go chill and then we have the house and the pool. It's really nice. It's basically like a regular party, you know what I mean? And um, that's where the majority of the fun happens in Iran, is in private, in your own home. But again, it's like there's a lot to do there, even in public. And it's fun. <laughs> I love Iran. I miss it so much. Last little random fact I'll give you guys before I go is that Sh Iran is the Shia epicenter of the world. So Islamic people are, there are two kinds of Islamic people. There are Sunni people and there are Shia people. Most Islamic people are Sunni, but Iranian people are Shia. So. That is a little differentiation. Also speaking on the Islamic thing, I'm not gonna talk about it too much because it scares me, but a lot of people are in the Islamic fear. It's like a thing. I'm sorry, okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Um, I had so much fun filming this for you and getting dressed and sitting down. Did the lighting like really get way bad? I don't know what that's about, but thanks again for watching. Um, it's been really, really fun. Again, I've been saying this for months, but I'm gonna try to get back into this in a real way. <laughs> like, I am so, I miss you guys so much. That's all I have to say. So tell me what, what you wanna see from me. Like, do you want more sit down and talk videos like this? Or do you prefer when I vlog? Do you wanna see my family? Like, who do you wanna see? Do you wanna see my dog? Since you guys, if you're watching this this long, you can see my dog. Look at him. And no, he's, wait, 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 wait. No, he doesn't want to see you. Okay.